this lecture we are going to discuss about the proteins peptides and amino acids so proteins and peptides are the polymers of alpha amino acids and in these polymers the alpha amino acids are combined by or linked together by an amide linkage or a peptide linkage and the, the re repeating units in peptide is called amino acid residue and the proteins are polypeptides that are made up of 4200 amino acids now see here this is a <clears throat> this is an amino acid which what are now first of all what we what are amino acids we have to talk about that amino acids are such organic molecules in which coh as group it is carboxylic acid group and amino group are present in a molecule and here why we are calling this amino acid as an alpha amino acid because here both these amino group as well as this carboxylic acid group is attached to an alpha carbon atom now what is alpha carbon atom alpha carbon atom is a carbon atom which is next to main functional group now according to iupac convention of nomenclature the if there are more than two more than one uh, functional group is present then the priority is given to this uh, coh group with respect to this nh2 group according to iupac convention so that's why and the carbon atom which is next to the main functional group which is called alpha carbon atom that's why this carbon is an alpha carbon atom and these two coh group and this nh2 group are attached to this alpha carbon atom that's why this amino acids are known as alpha amino acids now according to the Uh, what are proteins? Actually, proteins. I already told you that proteins are are only amino acids. I mean, more than two, uh, many amino acids are combined together through a peptide linkage or amide bond to form a protein molecule. And in a protein, actually, proteins are polypeptides, and in uh, protein molecule, there are forty to hundred such amino acids which are repeated again and again. And when here, here the two amino acids are combined together to form a peptide, that is a dipeptide because two amino acids are here. If we add three amino acids, this is called tripeptide and tetrapeptide, and so on. And these amino acids are combined together a bond which is called peptide bond. This is CONS. This is a peptide bond or peptide linkage or amide bond. Now, in uh, naturally. according amino acids there are 20 most common naturally occurring amino acids okay so alpha amino acids there are 20 naturally occurring alpha amino acids and these amino acids are written over here which occurs uh, which generally occurs in nature and the and out of these amino acids which are 20 amino acids out of these amino acids they are classified or they are categorized in various ways different ways and so like one of these ways is that it's called uh, essential amino acids and non essential amino acids so first categorization or first classification is essential and non essential amino acids now what is a uh, non essential amino acid and what is uh, essential amino acid actually am essential amino acids are those amino acids which are to be obtained from diet because we either cannot synthesize them at all or it or it cannot be or they cannot be synthesized uh, in adequate amounts in our body so we have to supply these amino acids from outside in the form of diet such amino acids are known as essential amino acids and these amino acids are valine in parenthesis i have written val and so this val is called is abbreviation for the amino acids so this valine 
abbreviation is VAN, leucine LEU, isoleucine ILE, threonine THR, methionine MET, phenylalanine PHE, tryptophan TRP, histidine HIS, and lysine LYS, and finally arginine ARG. These 10 amino acids are known as essential amino acids because our body cannot synthesize them in adequate amount or either cannot synthesize them at all. So we have to supply these amino acids from the outside. That's why these are called essential amino acids. And the rest of the 10 amino acids are known as non-essential amino acids because our body is capable to synthesize them in required amount or in adequate amounts. Okay. Now, another type of classification is based on that is the aromatic uh, based on the side chain that is the side chain over here. Okay. One more thing. All this property, this multi, this is C and S two H and C O H multi is common in all 20 naturally occurring amino acids. They vary only at this side chain. Okay. Now, on the basis of this side chain, they are further categorized as aromatic amino acids. Now, what are aromatic amino acids? Aromatic amino acids are such amino acids which have some aromatic nucleus at its side chain. And examples are methionine, and uh, tryptophan as well as tyrosine these are the example of aromatic amino acids means these amino acids contain an aromatic nucleus at side chain and the class is uh, like uh, in the side chain some extra uh, COOH group or NS2 group are present so in, in the side chain if some extra COOH group is present that is any uh, CaOH could be present over there is carboxylic acid could be present then such amino acids are called acidic amino acids and examples are aspartic acid ASP and glutamic acid GLU these are acidic amino acids and if at the side chain NS2 extra NS2 group is present then these amino acids are called basic amino acids like histidine HIS lysine this is LYS and arginine these are examples of basic amino acids and one more categorization that is the nucleophilic, nucleophilic behavior of the amino acids. And if at the side chain some further groups are present which can act as a nucleophile like OH group, SH group, so such amino acids are called nucleophilic amino acids. And the examples are alanine, serine, cysteine, and uh, these amino acids are called nucleophilic amino acids because some nucleophilic group is present at the side chain of these amino acids. And one more type of classification is hydrophobic and hydrophobic and actually what are hydrophobic amino acids which are easily uh, although all amino acids are easily dissolved in uh, water but some amino acids are we have some amino acids which are not uh, dissolved in uh, water these are called hydrophobic amino acids like valine VAL leucine leu and isoleucine ile these are the examples of amino acids which are hydrophobic in nature okay so this is the classification of amino acids and this is the introduction of amino acid now after that we will move on the configuration of the amino alpha amino acid see <coughs> actually all the alpha amino acids except glycine have a chiral carbon and we know that the compounds which have only one chiral carbon they must show optical activity if more than one uh, amino uh, carbon uh, chiral carbons are there so there may be some other cases they may be optically active or not like the case of tartaric acid is a very well known example the tartaric acid but if only one chiral carbon is present then or then the compound must be optically active. So in amino acids, there is one chiral carbon present. So except this glycine molecule, which doesn't have any chiral carbon, all the alpha amino acids have, are optically active because they, they have one chiral carbon over there. And one, one more thing, all the naturally occurring alpha amino acids 
have L configuration. Like uh, carbohydrate chemistry, all the naturally occurring carbohydrates have D configuration. Similarly, the all the naturally occurring alpha amino acids have L configuration. Okay. Now, if this NS3 group, this NS2 group is present at the left hand side, this is called L configuration. And if this ammonium group, and if this ammonium group is present at right hand side, this is called D configuration of amino acid. Now, see here. I have written NS2 at NS3 positive, COOH group at CO minus. Actually, I have written this is this form, this uh, amino acid as a two ionic form, which is deuterionic form, deuteron that is uh, such molecule in which two ions are present. That is called deuteron means two, two ions are present, it is deuteronic form. Why we, I have written the deuteronic form of, for these two amino uh, this um, for these amino acids. So this is really clear by if you discuss the acid base properties of the amino acids. Actually, we know all the amino acids has a carboxylic group as well as they have amino group, amino group. Okay? And each of these groups, that is the carboxylic group as well as this amino group can exist as an acidic form as well as in basic form depending on the depending on the pH of the solution depending on the pH of the solution in that the amino acid is dissolved okay so the acid this NH2 group as well as this COOH group can act as an acid as well as a base and their acidic and basic nature will depend on the medium of uh, pH of the medium or pH of the solution. Okay. Now see, I have taken a general example of an amino acid. This is uh, RCH and it's two COH. Okay. The pK of this COH group is approximately lies between 2 and 3. I have taken approximate value to say it will be slightly lower than 2 or it will be slightly higher than 2, 3 but I have taken a common common language so the peak I am uh, so approximate value so pk of this COH group is light between approximately light between 2 and 3 and the pk of this NS3 group is approximately lies between 9 and 10. Now, I'll, now what will be the condition if I vary the pH of the solution or in different pH solutions I will dissolve these amino acids. Now, if the pH of the medium is very very low, it's approximately 0. If the pH of the medium is approximately 0, it means I am dissolving the amino acid in a highly highly acidic conditions. Now, pH 0, it means what I am doing? The pH of the solution is less than the pKa of carboxylic acid as well as the pKa of the 9 and 10. Sorry, the, sorry that is the pKa of the ammonium group or ammonium ion. Okay? Now, so the pH of when the pH of the solution is less than the pK of this carboxylic acid group and the pK of this ammonium group or ammonium ion. So what will happen? This amino acid will exist in protonated form. Means the COOH group is, will be there and this NH2 group will get protonated and it will. It will uh, exist as an S3 positive ion. Means here this COH group can act as an acid as well as this N H3 group, N H3 positive ion can act as an acid. It means at highly acidic medium, when the pH of the solution is less than the pKa of this alpha carboxylic group as well as pKa of this N uh, S3 group, N S3 positive group, then the amino acid 
will exist in highly sorry will exist in potentate form means this both these group that is uh group that is an acidic group or an acidic positive ion or an acidic group will exist in acidic form okay now moving on and the ph now we will now if the i mean if the amino acid is dissolved in a ph approximately 7 see for different amino acids this ph may be different but it is lies somewhat between uh, some somewhere approximately uh, to 7 okay that's why i have taken a common value at 7 so if the ph of the solution is approximately 7 then what will happen now see here the ph of the solution is greater than the pka of the carboxylic acid what does it mean it means this carboxylic group will get ionized at that ph okay and and this ph is less than the pk of this ammonium ion it means it is not going to be ionized so this co2 group will get ionized so it will exist in a basic form now this acidic co2 group is converted into a basic form this is co minus ion and uh, nc positive means that it is it is not going to be ionized over here now i can see here two positive so two charges are here is a negative charge as well as a positive charge so this form having two different charges is called jitter ionic form okay now this jitter ionic form is electrically neutral because if we count the total charge of this molecule it is electric uh, overall is zero so this is electrically neutral it has no charge at all or this form is called jitter ionic form now moving on another ph now if we dissolve this amino acid in a medium in such medium having a very very high ph under very high ph or highly basic conditions or under highly basic medium what will happen that is i have taken the ph around 11 so if the ph is approximately 11 talking about the this is a generalized form for all the amino acids so if the ph is greater than or the ph is approximately uh, 11 that is here the ph is greater than pk of this carboxylic acid as well as the pk of this ammonium ion then here these both two uh, for, uh, groups will be ionized that is cooh is ionized into co minus as well as this and it's c positive ion is ionized into ns2 loss of h plus so now we can see here this co minus is a in basic form and this ns2 ion ns ammonium uh, ns2 group is again in basic form so if we talk about ns2 group here in this form at ph0 ns2 is acting as an acid which is existing in ns3 positive ion and here it is acting as a base and in here this carboxylic group is acting as an acid and here this carboxylic group is acting as a base so depending on the ph of the medium ph of the solution the each amino group as well as this carboxylic group of the amino acid can act as an acid as well as a base so so what is the condition for ionization of this uh, ns2 group uh, ns3 group as well as this coh group so if the ph remember if the ph of the medium or the ph of the solution is greater than pka of this carboxylic acid then it will all ionize if it is less than this carboxylic group it will not going to be ionized okay and if this a uh, ph of the medium is greater than this amount and is supposed to bind then it is going to be ionized otherwise it is not going to be ionized as we know uh, there is an uh, jitteranic form or a neutral form it exists for all the amino acids so on the basis of this jitteranic form we have a property for amino acids that is called isoelectric point or isotonic point that is given by pi now what is isoelectric point or uh, 
isotonic point pi of an amino acid actually this is the ph at which the amino acid does not migrate in any electric field actually if the amino we know that amino acid have a charge charge amino acid have charge so if the amino acid exists in as a cationic form then it will migrate in electric field and if it exists in a anionic form then it also migrates in electric field but if the amino acid exists in a neutral form it then it will not migrate towards any electric field now what is the neutral form for an amino acid that is actually deuteronic form is a neutral form for the amino acid where no net charge is there that is total electrical neutral neutrality is there so in another words we can say that at pH at which the amino acid exists in deuteronic form or exists in neutral form or their total electrical neutrality is so this is the definition for uh, isolated point for amino acids so on the basis of this side chains there are three cases to be considered okay now the first case case is if the side chain is neutral first case is when neutral side chain is present that is such amino acids characterized by two pkh values when there is no acidic or basic side chain there is only neutral side chain such amino acids are characterized by only two pkh values and these two k pkh values now i am taking the very first example or very simple example of here it's a glycine molecule which have pka1 that is for alpha carboxyl group that is 2.34 and pka2 that is for alpha ammonium ion that is 9.6 now see now and i already i have already told you that and when we were, uh, we were discussing the acidic and basic properties of the amino acids when the there are when the amino acid is dissolved in highly acidic conditions means when the ph of the amino acid is less than pk1 that is 2.34 then under such condition what should happen all the functional group that is coh group as well as this nsc group will get protonated and so this is called protonated form and if you see the overall charge is one positive charge that's why this is called cationic form now when the ph of the solution is greater than 2.34 now remember it i have already told you that the group is on the functional group the ns2 group and coh group only ionized when the ph of the solution exceeds the pk of that particular group now here the ph is greater than 2.34 This is the two point three for this alpha carboxyl group. Now it means this alpha carboxyl group will get nine. Now it is going to be ionized. So this CO is to be ionized and is converted into this CO minus, and this is the basic form of the CO group. And this NH group is not going to be, and it is supposed to be not going to be ionized. It will exist in NH three positive form. Then. and this form is called deuteronic form because their their overall is electrically neutral form it is one positive and one negative charge so overall there is no net uh, net charge that's why this form is electrically neutral or deuteronic form and p, when we when the ph of the solution is greater than this 9.6 so this is the ph for this ammonia pk for the ammonia ion now here this nsc Plus group is also is going to be ionized. Now it is, it is ionized. It gives it S plus sign. Now it is converted into. It is the highly basic condition. So NS two is there and CO minus is there. 
So this is called anionic formation where one negative charge is there. Now how will we calculate the PK or PI of this neutron molecule? So PI of for such cases PI is equal to average of these two PKs. That is PI is equal to PK1 plus PK2 divided by 2. So here the PK is here the PK is here the PI is will be the average of here the PI will be what? This is the average of this 92.34 and 9.6. So this will be the PI for this glycine molecule. Now see here this deuteronic form is existing between the PI between two PI values and what are the two, two PI values? 9.6 and 2.34. So this different form is exists between or in between 9.6 and 2.34. So that's why the PI will be average of these two values. Okay. Now moving on the second case, when the side chain is acidic, it means it is extra COOH group, extra carboxylic acid group is present on the side chain. I'm taking one example of aspartic acid. So in aspartic acid, if you see the structure of aspartic acid, in the side chain an extra COOH group is present. This is the extra COOH group over here. Now, again, the pK1 that is the pK of is the ionization constant for alpha COH group that is 1.88 and the ionization constant for the alpha ammonium ion for this, this alpha ammonium ion is around 9.6 and the pK3 that is the ionization constant of the side chain carboxylic acid that is 2.77 Again, we move from the lowest pH when the solution is dissolved in a pH under highly acidic conditions that is when and the pH what is the lowest pH here the lowest pH will be here when the pH of the solution will be less than this 1.88 here the pH must be less than 1.88 because greater than 1.88 this will be ionized so when the pH of the solution is pH uh, 1.88 less than 1.88 then all the functional groups present here, that is two carboxylic acid groups, and this NS2 is, will get protonated. So it will exist in fully protonated form, that is, one positive charge is there, that's why this is called cationic form. Now, when the pH of the solution, now the pH of the solution, we have increased the pH of the solution. Now the pH of the solution is greater than 1.88, but less than 2.77 see but the pH of the solution is greater than 1.88 means the pH is in between 1.88 and 2.77 but less than 2.77 and greater than 1.88 now at that point what will happen this is the pKa of alpha carboxylic acid group it means alpha carboxylic acid group is going to be ionized this is here and so and the remaining two groups that is COH group side chain group and as this and the is remain protonated. So here total electrical neutrality is there that is one positive charge, one negative charge. So total electrical neutrality is there, neutral form is there. This ion is going, not going to be migrated in any electric field. See, in, if you apply electric field here, in this form, it will migrate towards a negative electric, uh, electric field. Okay. Now if you apply electric field over here, then it is not going to be migrated anywhere. Okay. Now, if you, you know, moving to the third form, that is two point. If we increase the pH, get a two point seven seven. See, the pH is greater than two point seven seven, but the pH is less than nine point six. That is the pK of alpha ammonium ion. Then under such conditions, this is the pH for pK three. That is two point seven seven. That is for the side chain COH group. So this is also ionized here and this is ionized and this is not going to be ionized this is really still in protonated form now over overall there is a one negative charge overall this is one negative charge because these two charges are balanced so there is one overall there is one negative charge so 
It means this is called anion form. Again, this will migrate towards positive electrode. Okay. Now, on the third form, now moving on to the another pH, when the pH of the solution is greater than this 9.6, this is the pK of alpha ammonium ion. Now, at that pH, all the functional groups present here will be ionized. This is ionized, this is ionized, and this is again ionized. This is fully deprotonated form because the highly basic conditions are here. And this is fully deprotonated form, and at that form, we can see there is two negative charge present. That's why this is called dianionic form. And this is again will migrate towards negative uh, positive electrode. See now here we have to calculate pi of the solution. Sorry, pi for the this aspartic acid molecule. Now, see where this deuteronic form is involved. Where this deuteronic form? This deuteronic form is in between pk, this is 1.88 and this is pk 2.77. This deuteronic form is in between pka 1 and pka 3 means so the formula will be what that is pi will be pi equals to pka 1 plus pka 3 over 2 so this is the average of pka 1 and pka 3 because this deuteronic form is it is between this 2.77 this is pk3 and pk1 this is 1.88 so we will calculate the pk pi pk1 that is 1.88 and pk3 this is 2.77 this is 2 so this will be the pi of aspartic acid okay now the third case when the the when the side chain is base, basic means there is an extra and this two will be present into the side chain okay so there is a, one example that is histidine molecule histidine amino acid so histidine and alpha amino acid which have a extra NH2 group into the side chain sorry extra NH group into the side chain I will draw the structure of that molecule so pk1 for that, that is alpha carboxylic acid is equal to 1.82 pk2 that is the alpha ammonium ion that is 9.17 pk3 that is the, for the side chain this is equal to 6 and now again we will do the same thing we will start from the lowest ph this is the lowest pk value so uh, lowest start from the lowest uh, ph value of the solution so when the ph of the solution is when the pH of the solution is less than 1.82, this is the pKa of uh, alpha carboxylic acid group, which is the ionization constant for this carboxylic acid group, which is pH is less than 1.82. Actually, this is negative log of uh, ionization constant. So it represents the ionization, actually, it represents the ionization constant of this CO group. So this pH is less than this pKa, this is 1.82. Then what will happen? All the groups present here will get fully protonated because high density conditions are there. So this is COH, this is this get protonated. So after getting protonated, the positive charge is localized over here. Okay, in this pi member ring, and this is NSC positive ion, this is uh, in fully protonated form. So over all uh, charge is two positive charge, this is called dicationic form. So, if you apply electric field here, this will move towards negative electrode. Now, when now we are increasing the pH, when the pH of the solution is one point, greater than 1.82, this is the ionization constant for the COH group. So, it will get alpha COH group. So, it will get ionized, CO minus ion, and these two groups will remain unionized. This is an protonated form. This is a dicationic. So, this is a dicationic form. Two positive, sorry, uh, this is two positive charges are there, one negative charge is there. So overall, there is one excess positive charge. So this is a cationic form. This will migrate towards again negative electrode. Okay. 
Now, when the pH of the solution is greater than 6, this is the, what is 6? Six? 6 is a pKa of the side chain. 6 is the pKa of the side chain. Okay? So, pKa is, pH is greater than this 6 and, and less than this 9.7. So, greater than 6 means the side chain will get ionized. So, once this side chain is ionized, Now, once this side chain is ionized, so it will convert it into, into this form. This is unionized form, and here is CO minus ion. This is again ionized form. This is again this is the unionized form of this uh, aspartic acid. This is the this is this is been protonated. It is not protonated right now. This is again not. Protonated. This is that ionized. Okay. Now here we see one positive and one negative charge. So this is the deuteronic form for this uh, histidine molecule. Here total electric neutrality is maintained. So now finally we are going to the highest towards the highest pH. That is when the pH of the solution is greater than 9.17 which is the ionization constant for this alpha ammonium ion. So here this alpha ammonium ion is also going to be ionized. So it loses its proton. So this NH3 positive is converted to NH2 and this is ionized and this is again ionized. So here overall one negative charge this is called an ion form. Now see here this see the deuteronic form this deuteronic form is in between two pk values and what are the two pk values that is pk3 which is 6 pk3 that is 6 and pk2 that is 9.17 so this deuteronic form is in between two ph values that is what pk3 that is 6 and pk2 that is 9.17. So, the pi will be average of these two values that is pi will be pka2 plus pka3 by 2 that is nine, uh, 6 plus 9.17 by 2 this will be the pka for this uh, pi for that is isolated point for this histidine molecule. So, finally, to summarize, the pi is the if there is a side chain present. If there is a side chain is present, the pi will be the average of pKa values of the similarly ionizing group. What I am saying, if there any side chain is present into the molecule. So, if there is any side chain will be present, there will be more than 2 pK values. It will be identified very easily. If there are a side chain present, then there, there are going to be more than 2 pK values. If there are more than 2 pK values, it means there, are, there is some side chain present. Now, how will we determine, how will we calculate the pI value? It is calculated simply by seeing the similarly ionizing group. If at the side chain COH would present, then it would be the average of COH plus COH. pK of both COH group, side chain plus alpha, alpha COH group. And if there is a NH2 group present in the side chain, then the pI will be average of side chain NH2 plus alpha ammonium.